So this is the healthy cities generator. Um, as you can see, we have two very clear options when we first arrive at the tool. So we have the health option and the planning entry point. So as I was saying uh, before, when we started working on La Industrial, our first step was to focus on these health um, goals. So to do that, as I said, we, we went through all this data that we had to identify exactly which health indicators we should be focusing on when doing the assessment and thinking of how this plan could uh, benefit the population. So what we found was that in terms of um, environmental health, really all three <laughs> indicators were priority issues because as I said, we were in a very dense area in the center of Barcelona, really high levels of traffic, so air pollution and um, noise pollution were sort of key indicators to address, but also biodiversity due to the lack of green spaces. Uh, another thing we found was this very high rate of cardiovascular diseases and heat stress as well linked to this lack of sort of green spaces. In terms of mental health, a number of indicators came up which we um, which are included here under the general mental health. And attention deficit was another issue within mental health, which um, we decided should be prioritized. So with these inputs from the health side, what the tool shows us here on the, on the right side of the screen is, well, first of all, this list of the 20 urban determinants of health. So these are the different aspects that, as um, Amber was explaining, we found to have a link to specific health outcomes. And what we see here is to which extent each one of these urban determinants is related to the health uh, indicators that we have chosen. So in our case, with these um, seven priority indicators, we can see that really quite a number of urban determinants of health come up as, as linked to them, but especially relevant are these ones within the environment and urban landscape category. So greening, you know, the, the green coverage um, and the the access as well to, to public and green spaces from the, the residential areas are sort of two of the highest, um, two of the urban determinants that all that are linked to most of the, the health indicators that we have chosen. Greening, in fact, is linked to all of them. You know? So we can really see here that this is a, a priority. You know? So anything that we are planning in this area should really um, put this green aspect at the center. So with this information, we then moved on to the plan itself. And when we joined the project, the, the provincial council uh, um, already had uh, some, some ideas of what they wanted to do in, the, uh, in their project, what they wanted to change. And working with them, we defined two, two actions you know, that sort of um, synthesized, synthesized the bit their, their planned interventions for the area. And we, we divided these into two different actions. So one was focusing on the open spaces. So renaturalizing these open spaces, making them more accessible to the people that live nearby. Um, also creating these new pedestrian connections, new squares and places to rest. Again, incorporating all uh, many, many more green areas, also water features, making the ground more permeable. So all things that are very important you know, for um, yeah, achieving these more natural spaces within cities and especially dense areas such as this one. So with this first action, what we then did is move on uh, and assess the impact that it would have on each one of these 20 urban determinants of health. So some of them, of course, um, weren't relevant for us in this case, such as population density, as this is uh, something that, that is outside of the, the project scope. So we can actually deactivate these uh, urban determinants that aren't relevant to, to our project. And then for the ones that are, for example, street connectivity, as I said, one of the plans that, that they had or one of the ideas that they had was opening up this area to also use it as a way to connect, um, to connect the streets and make the space more walkable. So in this case, uh, so street connectivity, we, we rated that a, a medium impact. So the action will have a medium impact on increasing the street connectivity and intersection density of the area. And when we carry out these assessments and define the impact that each action will have on each one of the urban determinants of health, what we're looking at and what guides um, our assessment are these criteria that are included within the tool. 
So these, again, come from the the review of, of other tools and frameworks that, that were already out there. Um, so yeah, these are all based on the, the research that was conducted and is the basis of the whole tool. So we would then go on and, and rate each one of these. For example, in terms of greening, here we have a high impact note, because as I was saying, one of the core um, missions or goals of this working with the open spaces of the area was to increase the green coverage of, of the area uh, with different types of greening. So not only trees, but also incorporating um, more green, lower green areas like hedges um, and linking these as well, not to, to places that people will rest, places that people will play in. The, another action that we, so the second action that we included in, in our assessment was how the, the plan would introduce new uses in the built environment. So again, apart from focusing on how they would make the open areas much more accessible and green, they were also working with the buildings no, that already existed. Uh, and trying to yeah, repurpose, repurpose these old industrial buildings that many of them are now sitting empty for new activities focused on, on research and, and innovation. So these buildings were going to be refurbished to high energy efficiency standards. They were also going to incorporate green uh, elements on the facades and the roofs and include photovoltaic uh, panels for energy generation. So really, Although the actions may seem simple, and also one focusing on, on the built environment and one on the open spaces, they really do have a lot more to them. No? So within each action, we, we already see quite a few things that go beyond just introducing these new uses in buildings that are already there, but also try and transform these buildings, not only in terms of how they will be used, but on how they can also contribute to this greener and more sustainable environment around them. So in this case, um, I can show you, or we can together um, assess the impact for this specific action. So um, the plan was also to, within these old buildings, include new new uses. So these would be focusing on, on research and innovation activity. So in this case, we established that it would have a medium impact on increasing business densities. This would also bring other activities um, to the area. Another urban determinant that would um, be impacted from the result of this action would be the proximity to recreational and commercial areas. So again, this is linked to, to the previous one. Also by increasing density, another thing we, we can achieve is also increasing the, the proximity to the, the people that live nearby to these sorts of facilities. So again, here we would have a medium impact. And then in terms of greening, as I said, some of the plans were to include these um, so include uh, plants on buildings themselves, so on the roofs um, or on the facade. And again, this is one of the criteria we have within the tool. So when we're thinking about greening, uh, we try and include all these different um, ideas or sort of criteria that the, can also be useful for the planner to think about things um, that maybe they haven't included in their plan to begin with. But of course, you know, these sort of things you can always include at a later stage. So here uh, we established a low impact due to this green, uh, the incorporation of green elements on the buildings themselves. In terms of urban landscape, we, we would also have a low impact. So here we, we understand the, the urban landscapes in different terms. So it refers to the aesthetics, uh, but also the maintenance, the lighting, these sort of things that are all linked to, to the spaces where we, where, we, where we live in the urban environment. Uh, and again, no, this, this action focuses mainly on the built environment, but of course this has some impact on the space, the public space around about them. No? So improving the safety um, or the perception of safety of people that are walking there um, and, and so on. And then lastly, we have this, um, the last urban determinant would be for um, improving the energy efficiency of the, of the built environment um, in general. And here again, we see that we can achieve medium impact in this case. So already on this page, we see, we get some idea of how this actual impact um, 
both the urban determinants and the health indicators. So in the spider diagram, we can get an idea of um, on which themes no, or, or which topics within these urban determinants this specific action is having a greatest impact on. So in this case, we see it's mainly focusing on improving certain aspects related to mobility and again on having quite a high impact in aspects that are more related to the green and urban landscape. Again, we already have a, a sort of general overview of the health impact that's associated to each action. So in this case, we see physical health will be one of the, the health categories that has the highest impact. But again, this is also um, And then if we move on to the, the final results, we can see the, the combined impact that can be expected from all the actions that we have included in our plan. So again, we see sort of how balanced the, the plan is in terms of the different topics or the different urban aspects that it focuses on. Here, for example, we see, you know, there's maybe a lack in certain aspects related to, well, population density, which, as we said, was outside the scope of this plan. But in terms of mixed uses or facilities that are, that are available in the area, maybe here you know, is, is something that could be prioritized further and improved in the plan moving forward. And then the health indicators, um, here we have them grouped so in these broad uh, five health categories that we have, which are environmental health, physical, uh, mental well-being, and lifestyle. And then by clicking on each one, we can have a much more uh, detailed view into the specific health indicators and the impact that can be expected on each one. So here we have the three environmental um, health indicators. So as we saw to begin with, these were three of the of our priority health indicators because we knew that the the levels for these were were really in, in need of improving in the area. Um, and then we also have the same for physical health. So again, for example, cardiovascular diseases, which was one of our priorities to start with, we can see to what degree um, the plan will impact this in relation to to other health outcomes. And we have the same for all different um, categories.